Okay, Matthew, a very wonderful gospel. They're all wonderful. And I sometimes say this is my favorite book, but quite frankly, all the books in the Bible are my favorite books. And today we're in Matthew chapter 9, and I guess I should say one of my favorite books. <laughs> and it would be true, right? Kind of like uh, the book of John. John kind of makes a very kind of humorous uh, declaration of himself. He says, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And quite frankly, if you're a disciple of Jesus, he loves you. So we're all the disciples that Jesus loved. If we are his disciples and we walk with him, we are the disciple whom Jesus loves. Kind of a humorous thing. Okay, Matthew 9. And he, that is Jesus, entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's what I want. You get your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus, you're going to be with him in heaven for all of eternity, forever and ever. I love that. That's, that's the key, being forgiven by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only door, the only door to eternity. Jesus Christ, he is the door. Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. Well, not, no, he's God. He emptied himself of his glory. Otherwise, mankind couldn't have stood before him. They would have been all smitten, like in Revelation. His mouth just slew them all because he's God. But he emptied himself so he could walk with us and teach us. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk. Jesus could say arise and walk and your sins are forgiven. He's God. He can make it happen. Pharisees couldn't. He can, they couldn't do either. Verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then said Jesus to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. And he did it. Because God can do that. I can't do that unless God gives me the power and the faith, you know, spontaneously in some situation where God brings the healing. But it's him doing the healing. I'm just, I'm just a vessel. God can. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. If Jesus calls you, friend, to follow me, I mean, Jesus. Jesus says to him, Follow Jesus. It's time. For me, that, that day was just that. Jesus said, follow me. Maybe not so many words, but I knew it, and I wanted it. I certainly wasn't a perfect bear, and I'm still not a perfect bear, but every year that goes by, I get closer and closer. And it's wonderful. And the closer you get to Jesus, the more, realize, the more you realize how unworthy you are. It's kind of weird, but you, when you first become a Christian, you think, well, I'm all clean. And you are all clean. But the closer you come to him, the more you see how unworthy we are of God Almighty to connect with us. He's a wonderful God, friends. The only God. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans 
and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with the publicans and sinners? Well, how else is he going to preach to them the gospel? Okay, you can't just show up at the churches. Sometimes you've got to go out on the streets and preach to the harlots and the drunks and the street people. Because they're the sinners. can't always bring your gospel to the church or the Colosseum. you got to go out to them. Take it to the workplace. Take it to the concerts. Take it to the restaurants. Take it to the sporting events. Get the gospel out there because that's where the sinners are at. And that's what Jesus did. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what this meaneth. I have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Who is righteous? According to Romans, no, not one. So we're all sinners. And we come to faith in Jesus Christ and get cleansed of our sin. So we are all sick. And he makes us well by faith in Jesus Christ. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? People always want to put you under their little bondage. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Their own little, their little Donkey Kong club. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about me. And that's basically what Jesus said. They are not your problem. You are your problem and the choices that you make, not what we make. We are running a scriptural ministry. You run your scriptural ministry. We can't all do the same thing. You are doing well, we're doing well, according to the precepts of the Word of God. And this is how Jesus sums it up. Can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. Because no man putteth a piece of new cloth on an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up, taketh it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. In other words, you've taken an old, an old bodybuilding shirt like this, and you sew on a new piece, you know what happens? It rips. I, I try to hold my clothes together with boot laces, but it, it always rips, but I keep doing it because it's comfortable to me to, you know, it's just the way bears do it, you know. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. I don't drink wine, but I know the process that when you first are starting the fermentation process, you got to have it in open vessels, and then you slowly filter it out from vessel to vessel until it stops bubbling. Then you can put it into brand new bottles. And still there's going to be some pressure, but you got to let it ferment out and boil, bubble out. New wine into new bottles, and that's why we have to be born again. Not just a little patch of Christian religion or, or good works. We have to be born again so that what we do is not for our pleasure to gain a thing on this earth. Our pleasure is to please our Creator, Jesus Christ. We have a new purpose in life. The Holy Spirit indwells us. We're washed clean. We want to know Him. We want to do what's right in His eyes, not the world's eyes. See, there's a shift. It's called being born again. New wine into new bottles. The new Holy Spirit, if, if there is such a term, as it enters you, it's, you're new. There's a new experience. You're new, a new creation, a new vessel. It's a new you. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but I think you get the point. The Holy Spirit's been the same forever. But as he enters us, it's like, we're, we're new. We're new. It's new. It's new. It's all new. We're a new creation. Verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. 
but come and lay your hand upon her and she shall live. Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. So they're on the way to heal a, a dead young girl, young lady, young maiden. And on the way, we have yet another instance here. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but just touch his garment, I shall be whole. And she was right, right? She had faith to do that. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Her faith brought her to Jesus. Jesus did the healing, and that's faith. Kind of like when we're saved. We have faith, but Jesus does the cleansing, and that's faith. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a great noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad unto all that land. Jesus raises the dead without even batting the eye. Because he wishes it. To bless this man. He wishes it. He doesn't always raise the dead. Sometimes he brings a child into his eternal kingdom. And how can we short him for that? If he wants to bring a beautiful child into his presence early, just say, thus be the name of the Lord, that God has brought his child home before us, soon before us. It's his will. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And he saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They say unto him, Yes, Lord. Then touched ye their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man knoweth it. But when they were departed, this spread abroad his fame in all that country. It's kind of like a notable such and other had a limb defamed or blindness or couldn't speak. And all of a sudden they're walking around speaking and talking and seeing. You, you, you can't stop a glorious miracle. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil or a demon. And when the demon was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out demons by the prince of the demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Everywhere I go, I see lost and sick people. Sick physically, sick emotionally, most importantly sick spiritually. They are not connected with Jesus Christ. They might be church people and go to a church club, but they don't know him. They don't love him. They're sick. They're sick. They're immersed in sins. They go to the church and do the show in front of people and dress up nice, but they don't know him. They're not connected with him. They don't love him. They don't obey him. And you as a Christian... You as a person that loves Jesus, you're going to find yourself, because you love him, automatically in that harvest. Because that's where he wants us. Out in the world, out in the workplace, at the restaurants, at the park, at the gym, at the sporting event. 
to be laborers into his harvest by your witness, your faith, and your love in Jesus Christ. God bless you, friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye.